This podcast is brought to you by Stratus Media Group. Leading into the episode, right? Because it's like a lot of times it yeah. works too. It fades in perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Because it's I like the try flow. To, yeah, yeah. Trying to get the flow going. Mm. Speaking of flow. Check, check, check. Guys, welcome back to Passing the Bar Podcast, where we're a group of bartenders talking about the ups and the downs of the industry and all the social issues that we deal with. I'm Chris Pryor, and today I'm joined by Evan. Hey, how's it going, guys? And our special guest, Henry. Hello there. Yeah, so uh, I just wanted to bring Henry on. Uh, recently, we've been talking about this uh, in multiple podcasts of, uh, you know, what it is to be a bartender, what, um, you know, is it a real job? You know, why do Absolutely. people do it? Yep. Um, and so I thought that Henry would be a, a good um, person to bring in. Hen- Henry, thank you. I always, thank I always say thank you. geese, but it's geese. It, no, it's geese. It's, it's geese. geese. Okay, it I looks was... like geese, but it's geese. It is geese. It okay, is geese, cool. Yeah. So this is Henry Geese. He's uh, with Geese Logistics, and uh, he's here to kind of tell, tell his story. Well, um, I was I was actually very excited when you reached out because um, you know when we thought about the direction of the conversation and and how bartending has helped me over my career. I mean. It's been 16 years when I started my company, but bartending has helped me tremendously. Reading people, helping people, recognizing when they're upset, mm-hmm. and recognizing when they're happy. But back to the story, um, yeah, I started my own company, uh, Geese Logistics, 16, uh, yeah, 16 years, 17 years Man, ago. Top five. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was nuts. I was bartender at Rockefeller's. Mm-hmm. I just had a baby girl, Riley, but I started. Geese Logistics, and uh, I actually bartended to actually fund the company. Right. So I, you know, was doing it out of my house, and then I moved, and then I got an apartment on Laskin Road. Right. Then I um, got a little storage unit, and then I finally moved to the airport, and now I have thirty thousand square feet, sixteen employees. <laughs> yeah, I see it. It's and, huge. Uh, yeah, it's thirty thousand square it's feet. It's big, dude. That's a lot of space. <laughs> There's an area with it is. copy it machines that just mind blowing. Yeah, there is. And we would do a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff. We actually feed we feed a lot of the military installations, mm-hmm. the residential homes, the uh commercial locations. But you know, it, it's been a it's been a wild ride. Yeah. It's been a wild ride. Right. You know, but um you know, just in life you just gotta push forward, keep on pushing, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. Right. And eventually, you know, things will get better. Yeah. I and mean, that's you know, two thousand nine, I mean I almost almost lost my house. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, you know, it's one of those things where you just gotta push. But the restaurant business is is I I, I give that a lot of the credit because mm-hmm. I worked my ass off. Yeah, I couldn't at I Rock Hill. You that. and I worked I our asses that. off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did. Every day pushing to get to that next position. Right. So, and, so we, and we did that. With, yeah, with Henry, so my history with Henry, I was 15 working at Rockefeller's as a, a food runner. Henry's this kid that's a couple years older than me, comes in um, and starts running food with me. And yep. and I, I, I trained him to run food there, and then we're like the fastest motherfuckers on the on the yeah, stairwell. Damn right. Yeah, we're killing it. Was a, it was like a 30-step 30, 30 stairwell that yep. we're running up and down these steps literally all day. I was much thinner then and faster. <laughs> 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 much thinner and faster, yeah, yeah. but... But the thing was, is that I could say about Henry compared to the other people I ever worked with there, like he Thank was, you. yeah, he was one of the fastest, quickest, most hardworking, longest hours person. You know, he wasn't the one trying to get off early. Right. He was, you know, he was the one getting there on time. Kind of, and then honestly, to, to sitting across from both of you guys, Chris was that same guy too. So when Chris came to Yard House, there was the option like, hey, you can come in early and study because yeah. there's a lot of stuff on this menu. You got to learn like seventy drinks. So yeah. Oh yeah. my god! And then like 140 beers and all this food. This was a guy that showed up, you know, two or three hours early, even though he's working at, at Waterman's, the, you know, that morning. Wow. And then has to go open That's the next impressive. day. Yeah, so I'll be, I'm, looking, I'm looking at both of you guys, and the, the work ethic right now is just tremendous. It's incredible. Thank you for saying that. Appreciate but, yeah, that. so um, with you at Rockefellers, were you, were you planning on becoming a bartender, or how did that happen? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, honestly, I just wanted to get to the next level. At the, at the time at Rockefellers, we yeah. had we had to become busboy to food runner, right? To day waiter, to um, uh, yeah, day waiter, yep. to night waiter, and mm-hmm. then you had to work day bar. Um, how did I get? So there? you went, you went through the yeah. went through the whole ranks, went that's, through the whole ranks. Yeah. Not thinking about it, I don't, I never really think about that, but that's exactly how it worked. There. Yeah. It was like had this to. progression, yeah. and that which was is, that was which exactly the order. Sense. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that was perfect. Order. There's nothing worse than taking somebody out of a position. Mm-hmm. Then you know what I mean? Like I, I can't say nothing worse, but taking someone out of a position and then having them skip through, right? Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Into right. that to that final position. You yeah, know, right. like if somebody, let's say that we had a hostess, yeah, and the the bar owner wanted to make that hostess a nighttime bartender, right? Right. Kid, that doesn't you know what I mean like there's a lot work. of steps it work. a lot of things that you pick up along the way right, right um you know a lot of things that we i believe that we've pulled from bartending too you know 
um, the way that we communicate, um, mm-hmm. our mindset, you know, the ergonomics, the way that we set things up, you know, the way that we set ourselves up for for success, yeah. right? The way that we, um, our our teamwork, our ethic, Absolutely. you know, some yeah, things, yeah. some things that you learn, you pick up along the way, you know, right. like throughout your life. Um, oh yeah. So when you were when you were, because I feel like us sitting at this table, we're all kind of around kind of the same mindset, right? So yeah. So when you were bartending, you were burning the candle at both ends. Pretty the, much, yeah. Between your business and also absolutely, working. absolutely, I'd, I'd I'd work at night and then uh, wake up in the morning and run the business. That's crazy because yeah. I yeah. I I mean I know Evan, you know Evan <laughs> yeah. has done this for. Yeah. I mean yeah. I I had a um I had a uh, undercoating business. Oh God, Chris! Uh, yeah, I remember. In the same time that yeah. I was running a, a multi million dollar bar, mm-hmm. um, and I remember you know plenty of nights that I'd go and close the bar, turn around, sleep there, go go to work. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Do a job, you know, because when you first start a business, if you mm-hmm. guys, if you've never started a business before, um, I say everyone needs to learn it, but yeah. I, but understand that you're about to put in a fuck ton of hours, yeah, for almost just maybe just enough money to yeah. just pay your bills. You know what I'm saying? And like, stress level, yeah, oh, Unru- uh, unruly, stress, like yeah. literally puts you at your breaking point. It does. You yeah. know what I mean? It, so it you will. have to have a. It, it, no matter how hard your constitution is, it will be tested. Like mm-hmm. from absolutely, yeah, and in in in. Eventually, you're gonna you're gonna hit a hard time. I yeah, mean, it's it's like it's, inevitable. It's, it's it's too good to be true sometimes, it's, and then boom, you just get hit with something. So, yeah. Um, but rock, you know, when I worked at Rocks, I mean, you encounter some shitty ass people. Yeah. You encounter mm-hmm. some really cool people. Yeah. You encounter, you know, just a lot of things that you have to learn to to push through the night. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember having one, you know, multiple tables, you know, four or five hundred dollar tables, and not even get tipped. Right. It's one of those things where you just have to push through it, work harder, wait on the next table, and try to make that money up. Right. You know, so it's it's been good for me. It's it, and then so on that, all, what you just said there, and I, don't, I never really thought about this before, but now we're on this, we're talking about business and yeah. you know, and then talking about the service industry. It is kind of like that though. So I think you know we kind of get set up for for failure. You know what I mean? So we put all of this effort into this thing, right. you know, and in business that could happen as well, where we put all this effort into this thing, oh, and yeah. then. Boom! It just it yeah. kind of backfires on you, and then you get nothing for all that effort. So you, just, yeah, yeah. You I mean you're getting the, you're getting something for it. It's it's unfortunately not maybe, what you expected. Maybe half or three fourths is going to be taken from you to make what's what happened better. Right. Yeah. You know. So I've had instances where drivers are stealing gas from me. I've instances oh. where drivers are stealing product from me. I've right. Drivers get in accidents, so you have to take some of that profit. And it goes into the, it goes back into the company, right? Well, it's already you know it goes into fixing the issues, and then it sets you back. So it's one of those things where you just have to you got to be prepared for that mentally. Yeah, I mean, ready to take the loss, big time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yes. And I've taken a lot of losses. Yeah. I have, I really have. But you know what? I've learned from those losses. Right. And if I knew what I knew now, sixteen years ago, I'd be retired. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't even. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd be. Uh-huh. You know, the money yeah. that the company generates now, the profitability is so much better. Compared to the beginning. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. Probably in the beginning, you were turning, just making, it, covering the bills, possibly. Covering the bills, but we have GPS trackers. We got car trackers. We got, you know, right. the technology we have now. Good to go. Is, is very better. Good. Yeah. yeah. But, then, good. but, you know, you learn. That's yeah. all. Right. Can't beat yourself up about that. Yeah. But, well, I, I would say for me, like, um, and like you're saying, these skills that we've learned, like, uh, all the personality types, like you said just a moment ago, whether it be assholes, good people, yeah. you know what I mean, some people that are a little bit introverted. But right. even myself, I think when I, before I got into the restaurant industry, yeah. I was pretty much introverted myself. You know what I mean? I was a little bit closed up. Yeah, I was open with the, the neighborhood kids, but if you put me onto the real world, it was like I don't, I can't say anything to anybody. Yeah, but you know, really? as yeah, when I was a kid, man, well, in, in my neighborhood, I was comfortable. <laughs> Outside of, but it, again, you yeah. I'm, I'm like 14, 15 years old. You put me out into the rest of the world, and I'm like, mm, shy. I'm not going to say anything to yeah. anybody. It's yeah. crazy because, like, yeah. my mom, she still tells stories about how I used to get, like, you know, sent to fucking the principal's office for being essentially a class clown. You know what I mean? Oh, well, that's different. I did do that too. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> you know, like social. I'm just, social. Around, I'm just talking about people I didn't know. But yeah, if I'm yeah, in a classroom yeah. in, a, yeah, yeah. in a comfortable yeah. setting, you try to make people Yeah, laugh. I'm, I'm yeah. there. I'm in it. I'm social in, butterfly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but now I'm able to walk into a room of complete strangers, yeah, and be 100 feel good fine. about it. Feel good about it. Almost Absolutely. better. Almost better than you know being yeah. around a, a bunch of people I know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, that's something that definitely changed me because of 
because of you know this industry. It's definitely a learned task too. You yeah. know, I mean, being able to like not uh, learning how to have a conversation when there's nothing there to talk about. Right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. That's, like, a, that's, that's like, what makes a great salesman. Right. Finding connections at a at a yeah. thin air. <laughs> Essentially, it's like I'll take one. Of it's unreal. <laughs> You know, it's and I go to a convention every year. Um, it's called the Air Freight Forwarders Association. I've been honored to be on the actual board of directors for the one of the associations for the AMCA. Oh, cool! Man. So I've had the I've had the opportunity to really meet some powerful people. I'm sure, right? And I, and I tell that is because it's great when I go to the bar and, and I'm with somebody very powerful, and they ask me for a jack. I'll say, "Neat or on the rocks?" And just by me knowing "neat or on the rocks," right? They look at me differently. Like instant, they say right. this guy he knows his shit. He knows his shit, or he's a full blown fucking alcoholic. One of the <laughs> right, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is, <laughs> which so, is most likely a lot of people. Right. You know, like, so right. when you can handle yourself at the bar, uh-huh. a, at a convention, or at a meeting, and actually um, tip correctly, right, order correctly, right, you know, it goes a long way. I can see that being a thing. Could you? Could you ever? Not for me personally, but I've seen. Well, so I've been never probably at the level that you've been with the people that you've been but i've been in situations with like ceos or whatever uh, yeah. owners that's, of that's companies the level. that's same, the level that's, that's the level yeah. yeah um where you know it you're at a bar enjoying cocktails or whatever it may be but then you have yep. that one person that like is like fucking it up you know, yeah yeah that yeah. one person that isn't that you know right. yeah. they start that's having savvy. too many yeah. they, you know they can't carry mm-hmm. we always say this shit too you know there's a different um like uh, d- demeanor that we have as as you know pre, pre or post yeah, like restaurant that. people, right. you right. know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, where we can handle our shit, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? We carry ourselves differently in a bar situation, right. absolutely, yeah. and it's not embarrassing. Right. You know, there's Tim over there from accounting that's probably shit faced. Probably yeah. should be giving you know, him, yeah, <laughs> no more jack on the rocks for that guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I've it's, been completely, I've been shit faced a bunch of times around those guys. The next morning, I'll you know look at them and. You know, maybe say sorry. You know, last night I had a few, you know, a few drinks. When I eat, you handled yourself great, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, really? Yeah. Uh, you know, but to your point, we know. You know, once we get to that level, we know how to control it. Be cool, and, right. and portray it. Yeah, be cool. I'm yeah, in, I'm in this this company. <laughs> like, I mean, you, I mean, so there's nothing worse than getting that. Yeah. I've seen. I've yeah. I've been in the room with someone that's gotten yeah. that conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, hey, can you you mind coming here real quick? Because it's always it always starts like that. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Come here. Yeah, you know, yeah. you come in. It's like, all right. Oh God! And it's, have you had to have those conversations with people? And then, and then they, because they because they have been drinking and that that inhibition's gone, and then they, they get really the ego comes out super strong. Yeah, yeah, and they get very guarded, and it's like, no, I'm just I'm trying to help you. You know, what I'm, yeah. saying? I'm trying to help you. Out I'm here. watching out for you. And then I'm not trying to come at you, but yeah. now you're taking it aggressively, like. Yeah, yeah. So I was at a convention last year, and I'm not, obviously I'm not going to mention his name, but he's a very high up exec for one of. Uh, yeah, well, it's actually not a competitor. He's actually a customer. But mm-hmm. he was hammered. He was dancing, and he was just boogieing, man. I mean, he was slobbering. But so was he sloppy, or was he, he was just fun? Sloppy. He wasn't just. He wasn't he was, fun. He, he was, was sloppy. Sl- everybody was looking at him, and oh, no. and, and and to his credit, uh, my mother passed six years ago, and he actually knew my mother. Oh wow! Okay. So the company he, he actually works for the same company. They sent a huge bouquet to the funeral home, and the, he did. Oh yeah, him yeah. and yeah, and everybody. Mm-hmm. Just a great dude. But I grabbed him. Right. I said, "What's your room number?" Oh, I'm getting you out of here. Right. So I literally, you know, I I had a whole. I didn't. He could walk, but it was tough getting him up there. But I got him to his room. Right. Respectively. W- yeah. Yeah. Woke up the next day. <laughs> he found me. He's like. Thank you so much. <laughs> I said, you're welcome, baby. Could have got worse, You're man. welcome, baby. I'm here, tra- I'm here to save you. That's Don't great. worry about it. <laughs> that's great. That's a situation where the train's about to hit the station. Yeah, and you exactly. To, exactly. Like, pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. I mean, he, was on his, he, was on, he was on his way to lose his job. Oh, awesome. man. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. I, but you're going to encounter that kind of stuff. But, you know, you just got when you recognize it. Try yeah, to, try help to him out. Yeah, try to fix. Yeah. I, I mean, I could tell you a few stories, few funny stories. <laughs> Four hundred <laughs> listeners. I don't, I'm not too yeah, sure yeah. about water. <laughs> <laughs> I think they get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I think we're all the mindset between it seems to be also you two and Steve. That's that's not here with us, but. Um, we Love always you, Steve. We, yeah, yeah, shout out to Steve. Steve. Never, never forget. It's nice meeting you. Forget. Forget. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, we we're we're in the business of of not 
we're, we're in the business of creating our own business. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's always been our mindset. That's, I like you know that. what I mean? I like um, you know, it, it, we've come.